Well, I've got 10 o'clock, so I think Marcia will join us when she can, and we should uh, get this meeting underway. It's good to see everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, let's see. Michelle is our guest, as is Robin. We're not live streaming. Um, and there's no public to be heard. So we're moving on to the minutes of the last meeting on March 3rd. Prudence, you did a hell of a job. That's a lot of reading. <laughs> Any corrections, comments? Motions? Uh, I make a, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Julie. Go ahead, Jean. I make a motion that we approve the March 3rd, 2020 uh, minutes. And I'll second. Thank you. Really, Prudence, that was quite a job. What the meetings are really chock full. Yes, it's amazing. There, we do do something during two hours that we meet. <laughs> All right, so now we're on to the old business health and wellness in the facility. Michelle is on. Um, I don't have any update per se on the scope of services. I'm still working with our purchasing department to release that. Um, it's an opportunity, really, we can identify potential responders. So I think as a group, we've already talked about LUH and LPH and Kaiser, um, I think I may have mentioned that the first time the YMCA um, and Longmont Clinic um, applied uh, when we did the RFP. Are there any other healthcare providers that you all um, would think we need to specifically send the request for proposal information to besides those individuals, uh, those individual organizations? So Longmont United, Longs Peak Hospital, Kaiser, YMCA, Longmont Clinic. Is there anybody? How about the Boulder Community Health? There's a whole range of physicians and services associated with that. Okay. And that's Boulder Community Health, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the big umbrella for the practice, okay. all those practices. Okay. Anybody else? Michelle, I don't Michelle, know. Michelle, do we know if I don't others? Know. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Art. Art, go ahead. Oh, I don't know if it's probably, but is is uh, would Sana Salud fit into this at all or not? Yeah, that's a great point, um, Art. I will add them to the list. I don't okay. know that, but great, great thought. Thank you. Yeah, I was thinking that too, Art. <clears throat> Prudence, did you have somebody else? No, but Art read my mind. Yay, okay. <laughs> I didn't know he had such talent. <laughs> Great. He read two minds, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and this kind of, the other point, kind of I, I have as a separate item on the agenda, but um, there is a possibility that we can pull the foot care piece out. Uh, Visiting Nurse Association in Denver is now expanding um, their foot care clinics into uh, Boulder County, Northern uh, Boulder County. They have had a clinic at the Louisville Senior Center for a long time, um, and they reached out to me and asked if we'd be interested. So I think if the timing is right to separate um, and do a separate RFP for the foot care clinic and had a great conversation. She sent me lots of information from the VNA perspective. So um, that's kind of what I'm inclined to do is to go ahead and release the foot care specifically separate. Um, that sounds good. Unless you all have any real concern about that. 
no, no, I see an okay. Okay. So um, we have two potential to uh, two potential folks who may apply for the foot fair clinic. VNA is absolutely interested. And then we have an individual nurse who may apply. Um, I don't know that that nurse has all of the insurance and all of those kinds of things at the, at the level, but VNA has indicated they charge uh, just $40, which is actually a little bit cheaper um, than some of the other foot care clinics. So um, anyways, so that's kind of where I'm at with with the, the two RFPs and I'm gonna move those forward if that's okay. Janine. Alt A. I have a question about those clinics. Uh, is, it, is VNA able to submit insurance regarding yeah. that or is that all out of pocket? Yeah, so VNA as a as a nonprofit large organization is able to cover all of that. Yeah, because I think that's going to be important for any of the vendors because many of our clients uh, would have medical coverage for that, especially right. if they were diabetic. And yeah. Having somebody that can submit claims is going to be important. Janine, would you be interested in seeing the material now that VNA submitted? Or um, I, I obviously sure. you all will be involved in the selection process and you'll see it later. Yes, I would be interested. Okay. And Prudence, you too? Um, yeah, I'll take a look at it. VNA is huge, it's all over the United States. Um, is there a way we can contact um, the Louisville Senior Center to see what their experience yeah. with them is? Yeah, I meet with Katie, the manager, on a regular okay. basis, and okay. um, both Louisville and Boulder brought their foot care clinics back into their building several months ago. Um, okay. They got clearance from the health department to do that, and so I know they're following all the PPE, and I know their clients were very happy to have them back. So, okay. yeah, so good feedback. Shell, would this just be for them offering service in the building? Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, VNA is not interested in, in owning or renting their own yeah. facilities. They really, as a nonprofit, want a partner. It's a great right. fit for us, uh, really. Yeah. Yeah, so. because I know a couple older people have held on to the connection from right. services past to they right. go to her house, she goes to their house. Right. And we've made referrals to her because she will do house calls, which is great right. um, and has been good during COVID. Yeah. But not, not um, you know, it's a specialty. You all know this. Foot yeah. care is definitely a specialty. And so um, making sure folks have that is really critical. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. Super. So that takes care of A and B unless you have any other feedback, but. Sounds good. Sounds like we're moving in the right direction. Great. So we're reviewing the 2021 goals. Yeah. So, so Prudence did a really good job of capturing them in the minutes. She and did. I typically embed them at the end of the agenda. So you have them two places, uh, part of the minutes and at the end of the agenda. And I just wanna check in, make sure we got them all, got them right. I'm not thinking of anything else. But... Okay. All right, then we're going with them, right? No changes to the minutes and we're all good. Okay. We're all good. good. Go for it. All right. And then D, 2020 annual report date to the city council, which that's another lengthy document. Well, let's do the proclamation first, Susan. It's a little shorter. <laughs> okay. So here's the way it's set up right now. On April 27th, the proclamation is early in the agenda as a part of special reports. 
And right now the annual report is a part of general business, which is later in the agenda. Um, so that could change, but that's how it stands right now. The proclamation language I took from the um, Association of Community Living's wording and they put out a sample proclamation every year. This year, it's about strength and um, enrichment, older adults. So um, got some statistics. You'll see those in there in that sample proclamation. So this is right now the proclamation that's been submitted. We really can't make change. But um, the anticipation is the mayor will read this and Susan or her designee will accept it. And that will be close to seven o'clock. You do not need to be present. You're gonna accept it virtually uh, sort of thing, Susan. So any questions or comments? Um, I would like to know if Art could accept that virtually on behalf of the advisory board, since uh, I'm going to be laid up for a bit with shoulder surgery. That nodding of the head, Art, that, is that a yes? Yes, yes, I'd be happy to do that. To be I honest appreciate that. that. Yeah. Okay, so I will make those changes in the um, council packet that it's going to be art. Okay. And along with that, I've contacted Sheila and she will be the delegate to the friends meeting at on the 27th. Okay. Susan, do you want an invite as well or not at all? Um, you can give me an invite depending how I feel. You know, maybe I can at least listen in. I don't know if I want to see. <laughs> so, so for the council meeting also? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So are you going to read or are they going, is the council going to have read your document there? The, the mayor will read the proclamation. Um, not the proclamation, oh, but all oh. the stuff that has been accomplished. Okay, so I don't know that council will read the whole annual report, which is why I did the summary PowerPoint. <laughs> so, so I want to make sure um, some of my slides have too much content, and I will move some of that content to the comments section and make them uh, a little briefer in their slide form. Um, the question to you all is, do you want me to be the primary presenter? And then you are all are available for questions and comments from council or does one of you want to present this? That's the... That's I would like the polished presenter unless somebody wants to jump at this opportunity. <laughs> polished. <laughs> You're sparkling. I see it all around you. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's trash, it's paper. <laughs> <laughs> I would like Michelle to do it myself. Okay. Uh, if anybody wants to jump in, um, and certainly if there are questions at the end, I think Art, they'll be directed towards, if, if City Council has questions about the annual report, they're going to direct them, Art, to you and I. Okay? So because we are co-presenting even if I'm taking the lead. Is that all right, Art? Okay. Okay. Will I be talking to you before this on anything or just? I would say make sure you, you're comfortable with the, the PowerPoint and the report and the proclamation in case there's a question. Um, but 
Okay. Thank no you. studying required art. You'll oh, be fine. Okay. All right. So what's what is important to know and what I don't know much about is the city council will have their annual retreat. This was actually going to be part of my report, Prudence, but um, it fits here. Um, city council has their annual retreat the first week of June, and they have put aging on their agenda for their oh. annual, annual council retreat. So um, I won't know until next week kind of what they're thinking, um, but I think something is likely to come up at the April 27th council meeting around that topic. And I don't have a clue what that might be. So Art, um, there's always that stuff that comes out of left field <laughs> and you have to kind of shoot from the hip. Um, hopefully after my meeting on the 16th, I can give you a little bit more insight into what that might be about, um, but I don't know yet. Okay, I appreciate that. and. Okay. On their annual retreat, will that be an in-person retreat? You know, Susan, I don't have, I don't know that. Um, okay. I, I don't know anything about it. I have, they have picked aging as a topic in past years and I have done a whole white paper and presented. Um, I, I don't know what angle they're going for. So um, anyways, Okay. You guys know what I know. <laughs> well, I wish Marcia... vaccinated, they can certainly meet in person. Right, right. Well, and Marcia, if Marcia shows up, we might ask her what what uh, what she was thinking. But right now, I don't I don't have that answer. Okay. And so I'm just saying, as as this report gets presented, I think there could be some questions and some conversation around the council retreat because they've already picked it. Um, it is why I included that 2021 focus slide. Um, and this is a great time to talk about that. If you've got anything to add or, or correct on that 2021, 21 focus slide, I had two things. I had reopening, um, and then I had addressing ageism. So... Can Robin show that? Can she, sh does Robin have that? Can she share her screen? The PowerPoint, she sure does. Robin, can you pull that up? We could just go slide by slide. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Robin and I had talked about it. And I think we kind of rolled into it maybe faster than, than, the, than that. So do you want to just go slide by slide? So this, just the opening. The background, um, my, uh, my boss has recommended we delete this side and just say it. So I will probably delete it with, with your okay. Sounds good. Uh, slide three, Robin. So it just seems like this is a good opportunity to remind them about the Age Well strategic plan, even though we didn't do a whole lot of work on it in 2020. Um, I, don't, I think we wanna keep it in front of them um, and so that's why I put this in there. Um, and it is what we build the report around. So any comments, thoughts? Slide four. So this slide and the next slide are the ones that um, my boss thinks has too much content. So I will, I'll revise these a little bit, put some things. Um, in the comments section, you know, for me to know and, and uh, art to know, and then leave the rest as bullets. And then the next slide was some other COVID driven changes. So any thoughts and maybe Robin go back to four. Um, so there, there were, these were the bullets around kind of what COVID has done to us. So we moved to virtual. Um, Initially, what we were doing was really making sure people had basic needs met, f f paper, uh, toilet paper, meals, and ways to protect themselves. Um, and then we really focused on our email newsletter. Um, 
And so we've, we've added almost 400 users and uh, Deanne and Monica have done a really great job of making sure that's regular. And then slide five, Robin. And then just specific to the friends, um, uh, what they had have done relative to COVID is really, they facilitated our move to the virtual platforms. We were able to keep things free because the friends paid for activities. We continue to do all of those uh, last resort support. And then they put $5,000 towards tech devices. So that seemed important to me to capture that COVID driven changes first. Any of you disagree with that or does that sort of format work for you? Silence is going to be approval. <laughs> yes. Silence okay. is approval. Okay. Approval. I would All just right. shorten um, the verbiage. Right. So take out in order to facilitate. You don't right. need that first uh, sentence. Yeah. What if you're going to be a politician, keep it in. No. So I think for both slides, for this slide and the one prior, they're going to be more bulleted, and and I will take out the verbiage as Prudence su suggested. Yeah. Okay, Robin, slide six. So then this is where we get into the quadrants, and these are kind of the numbers game a little bit. Um. Okay, slide seven. Mm. It's an opportunity to really uh, acknowledge the Sunshine Club. They have given uh, money for this year, which is great. And I added Meals on Wheels because, because they use our facility free of charge. I think it's important to, this is a great place to just let council know what they did last year, which was pretty, pretty amazing. Um, unless you all feel different about that. No, um, I think they jumped through hoops and were flexible and changed schedules and got volunteers and told volunteers we're not doing every day and they were amazing. Yeah. Um, slide eight. Um, so Robin, I'm going to ask you to correct me. I know Monica and Veronica refer to the phone sessions as a bridge phone. Is there a good way to explain that to council that I don't know? Or is Probably there just like a conference call? Okay. So, like everyone calls in and they're just all on the same call together. Okay. Yeah. We have a phone that we call the spaceship phone and I really didn't want to use that language. <laughs> It's a spaceship phone because that's what it looks like. It looks like right. a spaceship, but from the old, my favorite Martian days. So, um, and then I kind of pulled out technology. Uh, just, um, they have done an amazing job as well. And uh, so I, I gave them some specific focus the, it, under support aging and community. Um, okay, slide nine, or the next slide. Yeah, this one's a little busy too. And um, so, um, and some repetition of some previous slides. Um, okay, next slide. So then these are the ones that I pulled out specific to the board. Um, do you feel like I captured it? Do you want something in addition? Any changes to this? Any other highlights from last year? I think, you know, you made the move to virtual uh, like all the other boards. No, I think that's a good slide. Yeah. All right, next slide. So I, I wasn't sure how to capture this. Council is certainly aware of the partnership. Obviously, they're now the board <laughs> for Longmont Housing Authority. 
but I really wanted to give some kudos to our staff um, for their involvement. And uh, so I, I just tried to capture that a little bit more generally. And then 12. So maybe I should put LHA on here as a 2021 focus because at some level that partnership will continue. So I should probably have LHA as a 2021 focus to could add that. And that's it. Um, I think the next slide is just a call for questions or comments. I'll probably change that questions or comments. So any thoughts? I think it ought to give the council pause to make them think about what all goes on at the senior center. Quite a bit. been amazing to me <clears throat> to observe in multiple situations how the senior center staff and you, Michelle, never stepped back uh, over the last year that services, care, and support of the senior community continued without a pause. It, it was changed in some ways, uh, but it amazed me and it also amazed some of the seniors in the community uh, that I have talked to uh, about how constantly supported they felt, uh, how much they miss going into the senior center. But the most important thing was they never ever lost the support or the feeling that all of you were not there. And I really um, send not just my kudos, but my love and respect. And I hope you will share that with everyone there. Thank you, Janine. I appreciate those words very much. Prudence. Um, I have to agree. And, and also, I think it's really, really good that seniors who did not, were not Techie, technological were able with the support of the senior center to begin their skills, increase their skills and perfect their skills. Because as all of us know here, that is the future. Whether we agree, disagree, it's like the horse and buggy. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You know, um, that uh, Janine, I think that under that LHA slide, I'm going to add the vaccine clinics. Mm. Um, and uh, for those of you, I'm just going to say it again, Janine was at six clinics for the entire duration, um, including filling syringes. <laughs> So um, that was huge. And of course, Art offered to help with any of the equity vaccine clinics. And Art, I don't know if Carmen has uh, tapped you yet for that. But uh, so anyways, I'll add those, those things to, to, the, to the slides. All right, so I have to turn this in by the 23rd of April. So I'll just keep, I'll refine this. I'll send it back out. So you all have current copy. Um, and then of course, it'll be a part of the council packet. Um, I'm not sure yet how this works, but I do know, um, I will find out about how you, how we either sign up for the meeting on, the, on April 27th or, do they assume the whole board will be there? I'm just not sure, but I will um, find that out uh, for meeting attendance on the 27th and um, hope all of you can be there uh, for both the proclamation as well as the, the business item, which is right now, which is what the, where the report falls. Michelle, the, the meeting, does the city council meeting actually start at seven? But it, they have uh, something right before that or? You know? Yeah, the meeting starts at seven and they usually do 
a pledge of allegiance and then they do public invited to be heard and then they do the proclamation. Okay. So we might not be right on at seven, might be, I, I just don't know. Depends okay. on how many show up to speak at public invited to be heard. But okay. I will make sure all of you get the agendas when they're finalized and, and all of that. Okay. Okay. Moving on to other old business. Anything on that one? Silence equals no. <laughs> New business. Reframing aging. Terry Middleton available. Yes. Yep. So she is available for the June meeting and it will take up the majority of the time in the June meeting. Um, so I want to make sure that's good for you. Um, and she has offered kind of two different approaches and I want to know which approach you want to go with. She has two versions of the Reframing Aging Workshop. Version one is ending ageism together. So it's more about learning about ageism and some basis of the Reframing Aging strategies. So that's option one, ending ageism together. <clears throat> The second option is called reframing aging, which um, assumes the audience has a little bit more understanding about ageism <laughs> and recognizing it when they see it. Do you all get that? <laughs> Seems like you would. Um, and it goes into more detail about the reframing strategies. So two different choices, kind of a more of an intro, uh, to ageism model and um, and a second one, which actually gets a little bit more into the detail. So that's the first choice. It's kind of which one intrigues you more? What do you want? I, I think um, my guess is you already have a pretty good handle on ageism, but you know, I could be wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I'm leaning towards the uh, reframing <laughs> aging. Okay, I see nods of heads for number two. Julie? Um, so I'm curious, in terms of um, her presenting both of those programs, which one is, is um, more um, put out there more often? I guess, which one is presented more often? Yeah, great question. Um, so, because maybe it's a good idea for us to understand what's being put out there in the first place more, more often than, than the other one. I understand that most of us do understand ageism in our community because that's you know where we are focused. But I think understanding what's being put out there to the community you know, in other areas is a good idea. So what Carrie said was she found that some of the Boulder County Aging Advisory Council members weren't um, as aware of what ageism looked like and they benefited from the ending ageism session. Um, That's, that, that seemed a little surprising to me because the, but what do I know? But um, but I, I'm thinking out loud. So let me give you an example. Recently, we had a person who wanted to present a class here at the Senior Center. And the title of the class said something about regaining your youth. And I said, no, that's, that, that's. Well, it's not possible. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's a little bit ageist, right? It's not very strength-based. It's, you know, I said, no. So I think um, th there are probably a million of those kinds of things that, that that ending ageism will help us think about where our biases, where our where we just sort of see it and it's okay. And I think I've told you all about my call to the Colorado lottery about their ageist 
marketing campaign, um, you know, calling it when we see it. So Carrie said the aging advisory council for the county, she felt like having that first one was helpful in sort of what does ageism look like? Um, But she also said the second one really starts to get at the work and get at the meat of what to do. So it's really up to you all. um, What do you think is the most appropriate at where you're at? What do you want? I think because our senior center is way above any other senior center, I think number two would be the one that we should go with. I'm seeing head nods, Janine. Um, You know, there are aspects of both of them that I think we need. Uh, You know, because I am thinking about what's going on with racism right now. And there is much that I am totally oblivious to that has been such a part of our culture for so long that we don't even think about it. And so, you know, if I had to just pick one, uh, I would go with number two, but I do think that, you know, if there was the ability to have a perhaps a shortened or abbreviated version of number one that preceded that, um, that that would be helpful for me because if I haven't heard the presentation, I honestly don't know how much of it I need or don't need. Right, there you go. Julie. So I wonder if, because I agree with Janine and, and um, one of the, I wonder if we would be able to have the, maybe the slides of the first presentation delivered to us so that we can on our own go ahead and take a look at it and see and then do the second presentation. So you, you, all, you all could certainly say in June, we want the first, the ending race, the ending racism, listen to me, let's, let's end racism, <laughs> um, ending ageism. And then maybe later in the summer or, or early fall, you could do the second. You, it, this is you, you get to pick uh, how you wanna, how you wanna go. And I can certainly ask her about um, access to the first presentation slides. Um, but yeah, I haven't done either. So I, I can't speak to, to this well. I like the idea of splitting it in two um, because she may not um, want to show her presentation slides before, Mm. understandably. I think it's the conversation, you know, that's really the the learning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing kind of both are important. Um, It's hard to say no to something you don't know what you're saying no to. So I can follow up with Carrie a little bit about this um, and get back with you all and uh, send you some other material. I do have a question for you. Um, How do you feel about staff being invited to this or do you want to keep it just as the advisory board? If staff wants to come, I say invite them. Uh Absolutely. Yes. I love it. I love that idea. Okay. I think the more people that can, can, can be present for it, the better. Okay. All right. So I'm going to get a little bit more information, interest in both, especially about uncovering some of those biases that we're not even maybe aware of, um, Mm -hmm. that that's intriguing. And yes to the staff. Okay. And this will, be, this will be done virtually. Is it, uh, am I understanding that? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Great. Good feedback. Thank you. Reopening plans, in person plans, connected yeah. plans, something plans. 
So, so I'm going to invite Robin to jump in if she'd like at this point. So here's kind of where we're at as a staff is uh, reopening May 3rd um, as a soft and unannounced sort of opening uh, for, for the most part. Uh, we're going to go quietly. Um, we have been meeting several times to sort of talk about what this is going to look like. So masks are gonna be required and registration for um, anything, drop-in activities like um, billiards, as well as any programs planned by staff are gonna be, registration is gonna be required. We're limiting the hours to eight to one. Um, we are not adding afternoon drop-in programs yet. Uh, we're going to focus on mostly on the morning kinds of activities like wood carvers and ping pong. Um, we have to put into place sanitizing. And so we're, for example, um, ping pong, we're looking at singles only, no doubles play. Um, and so we have three tables. So that's six people. <laughs> so uh, we are doing ping pong twice a month, um, it, no, correct me, Robin, twice a week, it used to be four, anyways. I think it's just twice a month. Thank you. People are not gonna be like so happy that it's all back to the way it used to be, cause it won't be. It's gonna be eight to one. It's gonna be, you have to sign up and it's gonna be more limiting, like singles play versus doubles play, that kind of thing. So we're gonna open soft. For the month of May, the June go will go to the printer Friday, um, and we will have some information about those programs, like the computer room. And if folks are going to have to register if they want to come in and use the computer, that kind of thing. Um, we have gone back and forth about um, people coming in with just questions. So our front desk staff has done a lot of information and referral over the years. And um, we are gonna be open for that. You don't have to register to walk in and ask the front desk for a copy of the housing guide, as an example. But we are gonna have signage that says the senior center is really for senior center business only. So folks out, walking in the park, we are not going to invite them in to use our restrooms, as an example. <laughs> so, you know, to, the phone is going to be gone, so there won't be a phone in the lobby uh, for people just to come in and, and make use of. So, soft, quiet opening, May 3rd. Go will come out for the 1st of June. Registration and masks for masks always and registration for almost everything. What am I forgetting, Robin? Oh, a front desk person in the lobby as our greeter. Um, so, so as people walk in, we are not going to be taking temperatures, but we are going to sort of have a sign that says, if you're ill, please go back home. <laughs> Don't come in. Um, we will still be monitoring all of the online activities. So Larry and Robin um, and Monica will be still monitoring activities. Robin and uh, also does a program. We're gonna be come in the front door, exit the east door. So there won't be coming and going from any, just any door anymore. We are doing tax aid through mid-May. Is that right, Robin? Like May something? May 11th. May 11th. Um, and they've been doing it in D&E. Um, and they've been doing it as a drop-off. Nobody, only the volunteers are in the building. The restrooms will be open. Martine and Griffin will come back and be here to help with sanitizing and setups. We've made a, a decision that the priority for activities in the gym is going to be our fitness programs because we can go up to 24 people in the gym. We can actually only have six people in rooms D&E right now, which is not very many. Um, 
and that could change right by midsummer. So questions, comments, Robin, jump in too. Go ahead, Prudence. Uh, my first question is having the pain of having to use the registration for the city for Centennial Pool. Susan is probably using that registration painfully also. Um, what will what will be the registration? Will it be through that website? Because if it is um, an instruction manual, practically <laughs> has to be. It's it's not. I mean, I'm computer literate. So is Susan. It is not intuitive at all, and. There are so many steps. I know Julie, <laughs> I know she's rolling her eyes. So, so I'm that's wondering a, about the registration issue. Right, that's a great question, <laughs> a great point. Um, so folks can still call to register. if They don't wanna use the website and Robin's been working on some tutorials. Um, and so I don't know, Robin, if you want to speak to this, you're, you're the expert. Yeah. Um, well, first Prudence, I think I wanted to get clarification. I think what you're talking about is reserving like a day to use Centennial Pool, like where it pulls up a calendar and you have to pick like when you're going in. Yes. But yeah, so we won't really have to use that as much um, because okay. mainly we're using our regular activities. Um, so you still use the registration system, but to sign up for those codes, we give you those single activities. Um, we will have to do some of that calendar options for our fitness classes and for maybe billiards or something. Um, so yeah, we don't really have a choice to do it outside of that system. But I do have a quick like three minute video for just regular activity registration. It's already on our website um, and we can send it in an email to you all. Um, and I will do a second one for that calendar piece if that's something we have to start using. But I'm new to that piece as well. So I'm trying to learn that part of it too. Okay, they did put out a video on how yeah, to make it. It's like night. 20 it's a minutes half hour long. long. Yeah, I don't oh, want to do that. <laughs> yeah. So, Prudence, I'll tell you, Robin's done some videos for our Thank staff. Thank you, Robin. She's done videos for our staff, and they have been excellent. Short, yeah, two minutes. <laughs> clear. She's done a great job. So, um, Will, what I'm going to do, though, Prudence, is be more clear in our go about that. Uh, about the registration options. So um, Robin, you and I can talk about what that might look like, so. And I would say people can come in and register too. We're expecting oh, yeah. that, um, like if we're open, like they can always come in if if they can't get through on the phone or, or whatever. So they can always call or come in to get that registration help. It doesn't have to be done online the way the rec center is kind of pushing you to do online. Um, so we'll see. Julie. And will they, um... If, will they be able to do a drop-in situation, whereas, um, you know, they can come in and they can register, but if it's open, if the slot is open, it, because I, th I think it might be, <clears throat> if they think that they can come in and register, you know, for an activity, they might think that they can just drop in and do that activity. Does that make sense? So will we make that clear in the go? Yes, and we will. Yep. Yeah. Call. Yeah. And the greeter registration. Yeah. Okay. Good. The greeter is going to ask about that. <laughs> Are you here for an activity you've registered for? <laughs> I, I will still talk as a staff, but I think if we still have lots of openings, I imagine we would let people come in. Yeah. Um, but the idea is to, is to advance registration. Mm -hmm. yeah. Janine. I, I just want to uh, put in my pitch for a balance class. We've all lost our balance over the last year. So if there's any any chance of balance classes, please put that on the priority. I think we do have some coming up in the summer, Janine. Yeah. <laughs> Janine, I've been attending what they call it the stability class and that addresses balance issues. So it's 1030 Wednesday and Friday. Wednesday is currently at the Senior Center Friday is currently at the Memorial Building and in May 
that memorial building is switching to the senior center. Yep. And it is in person, not online. It's been in person and it works just fine. Okay. Uh, Lynette yep. is the instructor and she's fantastic. And there'll be an open spot because I won't be there for a while. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I will look it up. When, when uh, people come in, did I hear you say that there would be someone near the front door as they yes. come in? Yeah, that's our plan is um, to, to see if we have some volunteers as well as one um, of our front desk staff. We, we're kind of looking at a model for that right now. Okay, and then my next question is, uh, are you looking at temperatures or anything like that? We will oh. not be taking temperatures. Okay. Um, but but my, our understanding is the recreation department has the instructor in the fitness class take the temperature. So we're, we're, uh, we're kind of gonna check in with them and follow their lead because it seems to not be 100% practiced, so. Um, I've never seen it taken. Yeah, so we're, 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 we're not planning on taking temperatures at the front door. It's not okay. proven to be the best uh, indicator. So anyways, so some of you over time have offered about uh, being interested if you want to help out when we reopen, um, if that's something you'd like to be. Our hours are going to be eight to one, um, and you could check in with myself. Um, right now, what we're, th we're uh, thinking those first couple weeks are going to be very busy. Uh, people like, oh, come back kind of thing. So if you're, uh, you're interested, um, we were going to ask our trip escorts. They've been dying for something to do. <laughs> They're like, let's get involved. So we'll do greeters and, um, and the staff are, are going to have to dial it up. Uh, and they, Robin um, certainly is looking at her front desk team and what that's going to look like. Um, we anticipate some people will be saying, why did you add ping pong? Why didn't you add mahjong? That, you know, so folks, uh, we believe that what we've planned is what we can manage safely. Um, and, and we've never done this before. We've never opened after 13 months. We've never lived through a pandemic. So we're going to be asking for some compassion and forgiveness, but, um, we're, we're doing it based on what we think we can do safely and reasonably. Prudence. Um, I have a question about, um, sounds funny, drinking water. Because um, I know, right. So because I know in the lunchroom, you go in and get a glass of water, you could go to a water fountain. So um, because it'll be warmer, maybe some snow in May. I'm thinking about um, telling people to bring their own water. It's a great point. I will add that to the opening page of the go to bring your own water. And also note that the dining room is closed. There, there will be no access to the dining room. They are still using the dining room to stage meals. So there's no, no, no going in there. Art. Yes. If, uh, if we are interested, which I am, okay, uh, who would I, uh, do I call or, or will you just put our name there? Yeah, I, I'm just going to ask, um, ask you to call and work with Robin because she's going to oh. probably be the one sort of figuring out Monica and Deanne's schedule. Is that okay, Robin? Well, I hope Monica and Deanne are both here with me. <laughs> That's yeah. the schedule that I want. Yeah. So I'm be not ready. Question. Are they back full time at the senior center? Not yet. So I'm going to say, Art, right now, call Robin, and then Robin and I will talk and we'll figure out what we need to do. Yeah, Art, I'll just put you a reminder to call you when I have more details right now, because I don't have anything else I can provide you with at the moment. Okay. And just for your information, Monday is the only day I cannot do it uh, for okay. the most part. Thank you. Robin, will you add me to that list as well? Sure. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. And um, Marsha just joined us. Yeah. Hi, Marsha. Welcome. Janine? Me too. Oh, Janine also? Okay. Thank you. Great. So that's kind of the reopening plans. I do have a meeting with uh, 
a longtime colleague at the Brighton Senior Center at noon um, to kind of compare our opening plans. <laughs> so uh, see what I can learn from her and, and uh, hopefully we, uh, we're kind of on the same path. So uh, that's Michelle, kind of where we're headed. Yeah, Susan. Instead of having people complain about you didn't do this and you didn't do that, perhaps you should have a platform, whether it's email or a suggestion box so that people can feel their voices heard. So, so great point, Susan. I just sent out a note to all of the staff to listen and take notes and feed information to me and, and people to me if they are really upset. I, um, I love the fact that people want us to reopen and we want to do that and we want to do it right. And um, we are trying to listen. I, I can't tell you how many calls Robin's fielded from our table tennis players um, and, and others who've called and said, when, when, when. So we know we'll have some happy customers, but they're probably not going to get everything they want. And so we just need to be kind and listen and take notes. So thanks for that. That's a good reinforcement. You may want to put a disclaimer in the go. <laughs> You're not, you may not be happy. Well, no listen, but no guarantees. You know, we, we so I think, and, and kudos to Robin and Larry, um, we made tax aid work, right? And so we've been, we know how to adjust and we will continue to do that and try to get people served. That's what we do. Marsha, hi. Hi, um, my sincerest apologies. I got tied up with Harold, which is doubly bad because I was going to apologize at the beginning of the meeting for needing to leave an hour early. So now I have just, <laughs> I just dropped in in time to apologize at both ends. Um, <laughs> so if you, if you have to leave at 11, Marcia, yes. do you want to say anything now? I mean, if the board is ready, we could just um, wait on the next item and let Marcia go. Um, I need to collect my thoughts a little oh. bit. Um, <laughs> did I just turn? No. Um, so, um, in terms of the, of the, uh, council agenda coming up, um, I have a request for everybody because the upcoming council retreat is, is going to be on um, the LHA roadmap. And so, you know, it, it is not all housing for older adults, but some of it is at least likely to be about a plans for uh, having something closer to assisted living than anything that we have now. And a lot of it is going to be about community building and, you know, and, and designing buildings that foster community more than, than the ones we have now. And I would just totally, totally appreciate um, everybody's thoughts on that because I know how hard all of you work at, at understanding the needs of, of our community that needs support, you know, the parts of our community that need support. So I would, you know, that's an ask. I seem to do that a lot, um, but but it's an it's an ask that I I would you know could you could truly use. It's going to be at least six weeks, so there's going to be one more board meeting at least um, before I would need anything. And everybody, of course, is always welcome to email me or call me or do anything just to sound off. Um, and my next request is either. Michelle or Susan, um, because I really wanted to understand the reopening plans. And I, um, you, you know, the, the thing with Harold was important and, and I always give him priority, but um, I really want to be able to explain that to people. So when the video is, is available, would somebody give me a clue? <laughs> I would really appreciate it. 
Marsha, um, either you'll hear from Robin or I as to when the video is available. Okay, thank okay. you, Michelle. And thank you, Robin. I couldn't see you, so I wasn't sure who was, who was doing the behind the scenes stuff, but I promise I'll watch it this time for sure. And good to see you all, but I really have to drop into another meeting because it's a one-time opportunity. Thanks, Marcia. Okay, well, thank you for everything. So are we ready to hit the adult playground? Yeah. What the heck? So, um, so many, many years ago, uh, before Harold even, I had planted a seed about um, a trend that was happening mostly in Europe where um, equipment was putting, being put into parks that was designed for adults. And, and Janine, um, several of the pieces of equipment are really about balance. So uh, there are a lot of different things. So um, for lack of a better term, and I would love a better term, adult playgrounds is what they've been called. And you do have to be careful because if you Google that, sometimes you end up at sites you might not want to be at um, for adult playgrounds, just saying. But um, I, I recently Googled uh, the Dirty Dozen Adult Playgrounds and uh, there were 12. And I actually called the woman in Galveston County who uh, manages their senior programs there to ask her, were these, was this equipment used? Where was it housed at? And so she told me that um, they had uh, purchased a bunch of equipment and put it in a park area uh, just uh, near the senior center and that it's used by adults of all ages. Um, and so there are parents who come with their kids, the kids play on your traditional swings or slides and the adults can actually utilize um, the other pieces of equipment that are more designed for an adult uh, physique. So our parks department actually has over the years has put in some funding requests and is ready to actually in the next two years look at installing some adult equipment. And um, so um, the question is, should it be in Roosevelt Park near the senior center is one of the questions that I have. So um, they have asked me. So I'm curious what you think um, about that. Um, I'm also curious uh, where you would see that as a priority. Uh, how important is it? So the, uh, the article is really um, Playgrounds for Adults, the Dirty Dozen of Fun is the is the um, and if you are uh, Google, you can see what some of this equipment looks like. Um, so you might remember 40 years ago when I first started at the senior center, we had fitness tracks around the exterior of some of our parks. They were often made of wood. You could put your feet under and do sit-ups, you know, they were that kind of thing. This is not that, this, this is not that. Um, so, A, what do you think about an adult playground? What do you think about it being located at the senior center or near the senior center? Um, what are your thoughts? I'm just curious because I'm gonna be participating in conversations with our parks department and I would just like some input. I think it's a great idea. Um, I, I'm not sure whether Roosevelt should be the only site. Right. Because I think there's sites that are closer to different parts of the different parts of the community. Right. So to that point, Prudence, I wondered about Northeast Longmont, where the village co-op is, Fall River, Spring Creek. Right. There are a lot of older adults in that Northeast quadrant. I wondered about that. 
Yeah. And I wonder about the Dry Creek Community Park in Southwest Longmont, because there's a lot of older adults down this way as well. Right. And I think it should not just be, you know, left just to Roosevelt Park, but perhaps maybe in stages, but addressing different locations because Longmont's pretty big. Yeah, and I think it's a great point that over time parks should think about this for a number of different park areas, not not just a senior. So, yeah. What do you think about what should the equipment be called? So one of the things that I have seen is uh, playgrounds for all ages um, so that it's sort of. What about like acti an activity park? An activity park. I mean, that doesn't really pigeonhole, you know, anyone. Yeah. Right. Right. So everybody sort of agreement this would be a good thing to do oh, it yes. sounds like yes. okay yeah. not necessarily at roosevelt yeah art the the uh the playground would be permanent uh, yes. structures right it will yes. not be okay yeah i'd like to do that now the other thing that we have to keep in mind of course is i would also like to see something uh on the east end of longmont somewhere northeast right. uh, longmont uh because you know, there are, there is a need there and people would feel a little bit better going, you know, into their own community. But the other question I have is you would definitely have to have it somewhere where there'd be restrooms available, et cetera. And uh, that's going to be a, a concern, I guess, in some of the parks. In the, there you uh, go, Michelle, restrooms and benches, restrooms great, and right. benches. Great point. Yeah. And I think one of the things that might be interesting is can we, you know, maybe put a few activity, um, you know, pieces of equipment in each park, right? So maybe we don't have a full um, system of uh, uh, activities in one, just in one park and then move on to the next park. Maybe we can spatter it a little bit, you know, depending on budget that smatter it throughout the city so that, you know, each community around the area is, has access to at least, you know, maybe two or three pieces of equipment. So that would be a great partnership with the friends if the parks use the money they had for some other parks, but the friends actually paid for something in this park uh, where the senior center is located. Might be a nice partnership. Janine. I'm sorry, I had to depart for a minute. I have construction going on in my house. <laughs> um, one of the things that I was thinking about is maybe uh, having one area and assessing how much it's utilized. Right. And then deciding how to expand out and certainly it does make sense to me to put it in areas that are available uh, to people in the senior housing community. So that was um, the how much is it used was my first question to the woman in Galveston. I said really based on you know it's an investment right you have the you have the purchase and install but then you have the maintenance and she said, absolutely, it's used and not just by seniors. She, I mean, she was very clear. She uses it almost every day. And, uh, and part of that's the proximity to where her office is. But also, um, she sees parents, like I said, while their kids are on their equipment, the parents are doing theirs, uh, the adult equipment. And so it was really good to hear that, you know, um, that it was being used. And I haven't called any of the other sites. Um, I had such a great conversation with her. Um, and then she asked me how I got a licensed counselor on staff. So we actually had a really good exchange. It was really fun. Um, yeah, Miami has them. I mean, yes. Florida, you know, the land of not anyone young. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, has them. And 
from my understanding is that they're very well used. Um, I really like Art's idea of putting some on the east. Yeah. And, you know, you can also have, you know, competitions, games, how many did you go to, I what know. did you use? I mean, there's a whole um, kind of adventure you can open for people. Right, right. Well, good. It's really great to get your feedback. I'm going to share that. Kathy Crone is the person in parks who's managing the project and uh, excited to share that with her. So, Any other new business that anybody would like to bring up? Then moving on to the Reports. Michelle, you're first. And I've covered several things. Um, I do want to say if you're not following, um, the museum and a number of other city departments are very involved in the 150th celebration of um, Longmont. And yesterday, Eric Mason from the museum talked with me about a piece of the 150th celebration is going to be on equity and wanted my perspective about the senior center and over time, a commitment to equity. So um, there were a few things I shared with him. Um, the senior center had the first uh, required bilingual position in the city of Longmont organization. That was my understanding back in 1980. And um, we hosted the first Rainbow Elders group um, in the county. Uh, we did that in partnership with Boulder County Aging Services. Um, I think our commitment to technology has been a piece of our equity work. I uh, talked to him about the two trips uh, we have made to Ciudad Guzman, our sister city in Mexico. Um, and some of our programming uh, for our Spanish speakers. So I, I was really, um, I was honored, I guess, that the Senior Center was included in those conversations and I felt good about what I could share about the Senior Center, not to mention the aging piece of equity. So he asked me, how did the Senior Center get formed? How did we become? And I said, because uh, 200, older adults went to a city council meeting and said, we want a place of our own. Um, they were sharing space at the Memorial Building and, and they didn't have much space. And so thanks to that group of folks who, who went to council and said, you know, build it and we will come and, and they have. So it was really good. And so I hope if you're following along, um, with what the community's got going on around the 150th, you'll see the Senior Center portrayed there. Megan uh, from our team has been working with our TV production club and they're doing interviews with certain older adults. Um, it's just been kind of a word of mouth recommendation. And um, you'll see more about that in the summer go. And then those uh, videos, those interviews will be available later in the fall. So um, Art, um, some of you may know Virginia Alvarez was one of the people we've interviewed um, and um, we've recommended several. I mean, it's just been kind of like I said, like word of mouth, who's been around Longmont? Who's seen change? Who's, who's got some thoughts about, you know, about this? So um, I mentioned to Eric the first Longmont Hispanic study, which was done with El Comité and the Senior Center um, back in 1988 um, that produced a series of interviews. So anyways, got to share a lot with Eric and I just wanna invite you all to watch and see and see what you, you hear about the Senior Center um, and the 150th. And certainly I'm excited about the equity piece. So, um, uh, I think that's it for me for now. Oh, on a, on a great note, actually, uh, 
Griffin Gastel's been our 30 hour a week custodian for many years. Uh, we've had that position at 30 hours and it just did get bumped to 40. So he will have an additional 10 hours a week. He will be, for those of you who use Centennial Pool, you may be happy to know that Griffin's been assigned uh, for two hours a day to Centennial Pool. They have never had, I don't think, a regular custodian assigned to them. And so uh, Griffin will be there a couple hours a day, Monday through Friday, which um, the staff there are happy about. And I'm happy that it could become a 40 hour a week position. They're much easier to fill than 30, 30 hour positions. So yay for Griffin. And yay for the pool <laughs> and pool users. So you might have seen him there. So he's been he's been helping out during COVID, but now he'll be there regularly. Janine. Uh, I hope you'll bear with me. This was my first meeting with AAA and it was um, uh, pretty intense. So I'm going to refer to my notes on this. Um, first, just as a reminder, decisions are um, uh, made, the AAA makes recommendations, decisions regarding money, and, um, and programs are decided by the county, uh, which I didn't know. And especially decisions regarding expansion of services that AAA currently uh, offers. Uh, there was a review of the current bills, adv advocacy for senior bills uh, that are being considered. Um, they include uh, geriatric care providers in uh, underserved communities. Uh, they're looking for increased funding for that and possibly trying to entice healthcare providers by making payments of their uh, student loans or tuition. Um, they are uh, focusing on transportation to dialysis, uh, looking at uh, the ability to import Canadian uh, drugs to try to decrease cost. Uh, and make drugs more affordable. Uh, this would require federal approval, so that may or may not be something that we're going to see. Uh, and they're also looking at equity uh, in healthcare disparities uh, in, in communities uh, and are looking for grants to study this more uh, effectively. Um, in um, March, uh, they addressed um, funds for home modifications uh, and home affordability uh, for seniors uh, the ongoing issues with transportation uh, and safety on the job issues. Um, there is also a program that is being expanded, which is an outreach to Spanish speakers and um, are looking to improve uh, and coordinate support uh, programs uh, for caregivers and also for uh, loss. Uh, we had breakout groups that uh, addressed economic stability, transportation, and housing. Uh, again, it was um, there's lots of concerns about resources for caregivers especially with the sandwiched generation uh, of caregivers. Uh, we address food uh, insecurity, which has increased <coughs> with uh, the COVID. And uh, <coughs> excuse me again, there's uh, been 
some financial allotment for increased uh, food insecurity funds. Um, <clears throat> it's thought that we are going to need to rethink transportation uh, for older adults. Uh, when transportation is available, there isn't much um, time spent looking at how people get to and from uh, bus stops. Many of our buses do not have the adequate wheelchair lifts or adequate support uh, for people with disability that require walkers or canes. So that's a concern and is being addressed. Uh, in terms of how does housing affordability is becoming a major issue, especially in, <clears throat> in Boulder County. Um, they really are, ha people are having difficulty affording to live in our county anymore and are looking hopefully for one time uh, grant amounts to help people with increase in taxes and just basic increase in services in general. There's also a fair amount of rental fraud that's occurring where people are um, being evicted from their homes because of uh, increased pricing of rent that's not affordable for seniors. So that's an issue, a big issue. Uh, they're looking at the problems with um, mobile home parks and the rising of rents for mobile home space without the ability to, to even sell their mobile home if they can't afford the rent. Um, and again, are looking for stipends or tax breaks in order to uh, assist people in these areas. Uh, we also briefly um, address the issue of hoarding, which has become a significant problem uh, and how to address that and you know, how to, how to be helpful in that area. Unfortunately, there aren't any cure counseling sessions for hoarders, but looking at services that might support uh, clean out um, options for people. Um, so that was our meeting for AAA last week. Janine? Two, two comments. Um, one, you mentioned the uh, uh, funds for home modification. Yes. Uh, so the city does have uh, <laughs> funds available through uh, the community development block grant money, and we make a lot of referrals to that program for home modifications. My understanding is that those funds do not get used to the degree they're available. So, um, so if we know somebody who um, needs a ramp or needs a this or needs a whatever, um, we make referrals, our resource staff does, and, but, it, but it's been that they're just not used. The second thing I would say is um, there have been support groups for hoarders. We did a group called This Full House for many years for uh, people who are hoarders. And the city of Longmont actually has a contract with private uh, counseling center here in town. And they do case management and counseling. And we actually, last year, I think we, we had three shared clients that we were working with who were hoarders that we referred to them and use their case management and counseling services in conjunction. So, um, I think it's important for the AAC to know that there are some programs yes. happening um, and they need to check with their municipal partners to find out what those are. You know, I, I think you're absolutely right about that. I know that in just listening to some of the input from people um, it, that I'm aware of 
the, the city of Longmont and the Longmont Senior, city, uh, senior Center is kind of miles ahead <laughs> of the county in lots of ways. Well, it makes me realize I meet with the other senior center directors and the county staff once a month, and I'm going to put this on the agenda for them as staff as well. Um, I think sometimes agencies think they need to start a program because it doesn't exist without fully understanding what really might be available. So, um, yeah, thank you for that great report. Yeah. Michelle, what uh, was the name of that place? Uh that need, they need to call if they have, if they're interested in possibly funding for home. Yep. I will, I'm looking it up right now. <coughs> but what was the committee? I mean, what was the- Well, department? the funding, the funding comes through the um, community development block grant money, but they, who they need to call is um, Molly McElroy. Uh, she's a city employee at 303 seven seven four four six four eight and there's there's four programs connected with those funds one is an accessibility program which is like ramps things like that one is an emergency grant program and so we have referred people there when their furnace goes out or their hot water heater goes out um, because those are costly expenses for, for some people. So that's the emergency grant program. The third program is a mo mobile home repair. So there's emergency grant, accessibility, mobile home. And then the fourth <laughs> program is just kind of a general rehab and weatherization program. And that's really about energy efficiency or safety in your home. So you call Molly for any of those. Um, and that's operated by the city of Longmont. That was six. I'm sorry, I'm trying to write real fast here. Four, six, four, eight, or four, zero, four, eight. Three, oh, three. Yep. Three, oh, three, seven, seven, four, four, six, four, eight. Okay. Thank you. You bet. And like I said, it doesn't get used to the degree that there are funds available. Janine, that was a, a, a great report and hopefully someone <laughs> at the Boulder County Area on Aging, you know, Colorado is going to get over $17 billion from the feds. Um, and some of that, from what my understanding is, is being suggested by the Biden-Harris administration to use for caregiving. So I'm hoping that someone who's at the Boulder County is looking at those grants that will be coming over the next several months. They, you know, they address that the grants are going to come and the monies are going to come. And, you know, the county makes, as I, that's why I was saying, the county makes the decisions, the, the AAA makes recommendations but they were looking at potentially um, a million dollars, that they're going to be receiving a million dollars. So that's really um, going to go a long way. Thank you, Janine. That was great. So I attended the friends meeting, but it was a uh, Mainly short and sweet. They they go over standard business that I don't know. I've shared this, but they always go over a monthly report of monies. They go over the last resorts, which are people needing money for you know rent that they don't have or something. So they step in as requested by our resource specialists and help people out. Um, we had Debbie Noel join the Friends Board, so it was her first meeting, and she looks like a great addition to the board there. Um, of course, the interest was in when was it reopened, the Senior Center reopening, so as Michelle told us, May 3rd, soft opening, and um, there's a 
bunch of guys working on donor recognition so those trees with the leaves in the front lobby can be kept up to date and records in a book as well. So they meet every month and they just keep that money rolling in. Oh, there was a $3,000 grant received from the Libra Fund. They are in very good health financially. Uh, Julie, I just noticed your last name is misspelled. It's H-A-U-S-E-R on the uh, agenda. Uh, yes, you are correct. I didn't even notice that myself. <laughs> Was there a meeting of TRG? So, Michelle, I don't, I haven't heard anything about, you know, the transfer of, you know, me taking over that position um, to, to join those meetings. So I have got nothing. Yeah, I don't think they've had any meetings, Julie. And so you'll hear from Kathy Fedler, F-E-D-L-E-R, when there's the next meeting. Okay. And they don't meet on a regular basis. It's more on... Um, I think it's quarterly, isn't it? Well, it's quarterly, or if there is an influx of funds or an influx of proposals they need to make a decision about. It's not on a regular schedule. Yeah, okay. I will follow up with Kathy, though. Um, I'm meeting with her a couple times a week these days regarding the housing authority, and I'll just ask her about that. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Anything from the Boulder County Latino Coalition? You're muted. Unfortunately, I was not able to... Uh... To make the meeting, I had another commitment. However, I did call Pete Salas to see if there was anything that uh, that uh, I, sh I would be of interest to report. And of course, uh, like everything else with the pandemic, the uh, Cinco de Mayo activities again will not take place this year. Hopefully, uh, they're hoping to have something to get the community involved a little bit, like September 16th or September. Uh, uh, some kind of activity then, but they're definitely hoping I'm doing something uh, next year. The other thing is, and I've tried following up on this and I have not been able to, and I don't know if Michelle can help me on this or not, but there's going to be a drive-through vaccine clinic this Saturday, the 10th, where it's, a, it's yeah, the, the 10th, uh, over at Front Range Community College from nine to four. But uh, you do need to under register from what I understand, but I don't have, uh, I don't know how you go about registering. I was wondering, Michelle, do you have any idea? I have a couple of names of people we could call if we need to, but uh, maybe Michelle can help us. So um, probably the person on your list to call is Carmen Ramirez. Our, right. um, she has been working with Boulder County Public Health on a number of equity vaccine clinics that have really targeted um, our Latino community members and also the LGBTQ community, who um, both of those communities are really being, uh, have been identified as underserved in the vaccine rollout. And I know Carmen's been involved with um, the clinics at the Lashley Street Station and some others. And um, I believe she probably has the most current information about the Front Range Clinic. And right. I can reach out to her, or you can, Art, um, but she would she would likely have that information. Okay, I'll call, I will call her, because I, le I left a message for both her and uh, Bernice Garcia. To right, call. right. And, uh, I have not heard back from, from right. either one of them. Right. Yeah, I've been referring volunteers to help out with the equity clinics because I had some folks who were specifically interested in either the um, Spanish outreach or in the LGBTQ outreach, um, but I haven't been directly involved myself. It's really been through Carmen. Okay. Yeah. And then one, one other thing I wanted to uh, say is, especially once we open up, uh, I would like to see if someone would be interested, someone from the center would be interested in giving a 30, 45 minute, an hour presentation. 
to the Latino uh, coalition on the different things that are involved. Many of the people that are on the board there deal more with some of the younger folks in the community, but they also deal with the parents. And I thought that would really be great uh, because we've had different people from the colleges and other places come and give a presentation. I think that uh, there is just so much to be uh, to be shared about the senior center. And I was wondering if if I did that, would you like me to talk to you about it, talk to Veronica, or or who would you like me to talk to about the possibility of doing that in the near future? Yeah, you can certainly reach out to me, Art, and then I would probably talk to Mar Veronica and Melissa about that. But reach out to me, and we can absolutely, we'd love to make that happen. Okay, I will do that. Thank you. And I think that's that's it. Thank you, Art. Janine, you're up again. I know. Uh, <laughs> busy lady. Uh, the Longmont Economic Development Partnership meeting is on Monday. It'll be our quarterly mon uh, meeting, and I will have something to report on that uh, next time. Uh, and uh, sustainability is next. So I will report on sustainability. Um, almost our entire meeting was actually spent on utility bills. Um, uh, but uh, just as a reminder, sustainability says act local, think global. And uh, that's a great thought and something to always aim at remembering. Um, the idea is if you can manage your utility bills, uh, that's going to affect the sustainability and the climate in a variety of different ways. Um, they want to have us look at conserving water for the future, uh, that Excel Energy uh, is um, pushing for the use of natural gas uh, because of safety, affordability, and efficiency. Um, and uh, went into explanation about usage charges um, and reminders for all people that both with Excel and the city, as a matter of fact, that your utility bills, your bills are changeable. And if uh, anyone finds that a particular due date is not working for them, they can call the city or call Excel and actually change that date. Um, I'm trying to read my notes here. Oh, gave information about leaks, hissing sounds with gas appliances and any uh, smell of gas or smell of rotten eggs, you need to call 911, not the utility uh, or the uh, city. Reminder that if you're having any work done on your property that you need to uh, call for uh, line information before digging, um, that um, they're looking at putting on uh, flow faucets uh, on, on new properties, controlled flow faucets for uh, water, especially outside water uh, faucets. Uh, they're uh, pushing for smart thermostats. They cost about $50, but you can recoup the cost for a smart thermostat within a couple of months. Uh, also wanna make sure that people know that they can call and have an energy home audit done free of charge, uh, that you can get a, a $200 or a $300 rebate for any furnace uh, that's 95% uh, efficient. Um, 
Also explanation about wastewater, uh, what the cost of wastewater is based on water usage. Um, and uh, they are very happy to come out and make recommendations in terms of water usage with the goals that the average use be 500 gallons and uh, whenever your water usage goes up to over a thousand, that's when your water charges go up drastically. And that we all need to make conscious decisions in terms of using less water and um, more water friendly um, outside plants and landscaping. Uh, next slide, uh, just a reminder that um, Next Slide does have a, a lower price. The normal price for Lex Next Slide is $69.95, but you can get 100 Mbps for $39.95 a month. And for a lot of um, older adults, we don't use the internet as much, and we need to think about that. Also a reminder that especially now with COVID, uh, there is any, you can get uh, a, a 1495 for two months rate uh, if your student is using the internet. Um, they had tips about setting thermostat using LED light bulbs. Um, changing furnace filters every two months, all of these things help us to improve our environment, number one, and uh, be more energy uh, efficient. Um, also reminders in terms of watering your lawn that it really should be done before 10 o'clock or after six o'clock. And um, to uh, have your air conditioner and furnace serviced on a yearly basis because that will in the long run um, improve energy efficiency. Um, let's see, uh, in terms of anyone who is requiring energy assistance, it was emphasized that if you qualify for SNAP, that all of the energy assistance programs will be available to you. And I know for, from working at the senior center that if anyone has any questions about that, uh, that they can call the senior center and they're really good in terms of helping people with resources in that area. Um, And I think that's it. <laughs> Prudence. Um, I did an energy survey of my house, which was free. It's long, you know, it goes from two to four right. hours. Um, however, you know, LED bulbs are quite expensive. And the advantage of doing the energy thing besides a lot of things, was that you get so many free LED bulbs. I have like three packages <laughs> of them. Um, so, because LEDs do not last 10 years. I'm not sure where they, I mean. <laughs> no. I know, but I, I just used a whole bunch of them. My neighbor put them up on the outside. And she said, where did you get these? These are so expensive. I said, I did an energy survey and I got like, 15, 20 bulbs. That in itself is is worth the two hours. Hey, that's how I felt. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thanks, Janine. So we are up to closing statements, questions, comments, thoughts. Good luck to you, Susan, with your upcoming yeah. surgery. I'm looking forward. The goal is to be back here in a month. 
Okay. On the first yeah. Wednesday, so. Okay. Do your PT. Uh, as soon as they I'm let me, which could be four to six <laughs> weeks out. Bye. I've already signed up across the street to uh, do that. Good. Prudence, do you call the uh, the city to do that uh, energy survey? Yeah, there was a, f um, you know, I may have read it in the Longmont Times call. Um, that's where I may have read it okay. on page two. But, you know, I would call and ask them. Okay. I, I, it was a good deal. Yeah, Excel uh, will also do it Excel. for free. For me, anything is free is a pretty good deal usually. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and you get the LED bulbs. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. Art, Art, if you knew, if, Art, if you know Bernice and you have her phone number, she can tell you all about it. Thank you. So you guys have given me good ideas for things I can do while sitting home. AC service, energy survey, yay. <laughs> All right, I think we can uh, adjourn. adjourn the meeting. Motion. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second it. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye, All right, take care. Right, bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Robin. Back to you, too. Bye. Yeah. Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Robin.